Okay, this is the second part of the 3.11 video, and we were on page 727, starting with the Zoot Suit Riots. As blacks faced discrimination in the South and North, racial animosity towards Mexican Americans was a powerful force in California. The state's newspapers described Hispanic immigrants as lazy and prone to drug use and gang violence. They also voiced opposition to a popular form of dress preferred by young Latino men. Called zoot suits, these baggy, colorful garments struck many whites as ostentatious and daring. In 1943, rumors circulated in Los Angeles that a Mexican-American youth had attacked members of the military. An angry mob of sailors and soldiers attacked young Mexican-Americans in what became known as the Zoot Suit Riots. While newspapers blamed the victims for causing the riots, the violence revealed the social tensions of the wartime home front. The internment of Japanese Americans. Long-standing racial prejudice against Japanese Americans emerged in the wake of the attacks on Pearl Harbor. Native is charged with little evidence that Japanese Americans had assisted Japan in the attacks on Pearl Harbor. FDR's advisors urged the evacuation of Jap Japanese Americans from the West Coast. The president issued Executive Order 9066, establishing a war relocation authority that forced Japanese Americans to report to assembly centers and later moved them to relocation centers. The relocation centers were surrounded by barbed wire and guard towers staffed by soldiers armed with machine guns. The United States detained more than 100,000 Japanese Americans, among them roughly 70,000 American-born citizens, in internment camps in the western United States. Many Japanese Americans lost their farms, homes, and stores. When the Supreme Court gave its stamp of approval to the internment camps, Justice Frank Murphy lamented in his dissenting opinion that it was one of the most sweeping and complete deprivations of constitutional rights in the history of the nation. The United States also rounded up some 14,000 German Americans and Italian Americans deemed to be security risks during the war, but detentions of Germans and Italians never came close to the government's wholesale relocation and imprisonment of Japanese Americans. The camps were among the greatest abuses of American citizens' constitutional rights in the 20th century. Many who were interned received reparations decades after the war, though these payments could not erase the consequences of an action still remembered with shame in the United States. And here's a picture of as troops stand guard, Japanese Americans from the West Coast line up for relocation to internment camps taking just what possessions they could carry with them and forced to give up their businesses, their homes, and led to internment camps. Okay, continuing on. And I just want to read on this page, this is the last page, and I'm just going to read the blue box here. Civilian internees in the war. Both the Axis and Allied powers imprisoned civilians during the war. As they conquered territories, the Germans, Japanese, and Italians interned civilians from Allied nations, often in prison camps where the conditions were wretched and the treatment cruel. Great Britain, Canada, and the United States also interned civilians in camps where the treatment was generally at least humane. Great Britain arrested tens of thousands of German and Italian civilians in England. Canadians interned more than 20,000 people of Japanese descent, most of whom, of whom who were Canadian citizens. Now let's go back to the lesson. Now we have to complete the Democracy Denied Japanese Internment Activity Online. Today you will learn about the, con the constitutional rights of approximately 112,000 Japanese Americans were violated as wartime hysteria escalated in the aftermath of the attack on Pearl Harbor. In the reading eye for today's lesson, you will complete a multi-layered concept web. web. Click the rise of global fascism to see an interactive example of one. Okay, let's look at this. Click the orange bubbles to expand. Click the white area to drag the map around. So we have rise of global fascism in the middle, and from that we have global economic depression and Treaty of Versailles. From global economic depression, you have the consequences of unemployment and social unrest. From the consequence of Treaty of Versailles, you have rise in militant German nationalism and economic depression and unemployment. That leads to Hitler and the Nazis' rise to power. The rise of German militant German nationalism leads to Hitler and the Nazis rising to power as well. Uh, now if we scroll up here, social unrest leads to dictators promise an end to these. Unemployment, yes. So it all is 
a web that connects. Okay, click what is the big idea on Victory Garden. Then follow the directions in the student guide to continue the lesson. Okay, so let's look here at Victory Garden. Your Victory Garden comes more than ever. And we have some vegetables there. And it says, after the United States entered the war, civilians began growing victory gardens. What were they? Why would the government be interested in getting people to grow them? After reading today's assignment, write a short paragraph in your history journal describing what you have grown in a victory garden. And remember, the history journal is just something optional that you can do in your own notebook. But a victory garden was encouraging people to grow their own produce so there'd be other things more left for the war effort. Just like in World War I, the same thing, trying to ration the food at home so there'd be more to send overseas. Trying to produce what you can on your own. Now let's, cl okay, let's close that out. What's the big idea? Remember this, World War II transformed the American economy, society, government, and military as women and blacks entered the workforce, industries expanded, and new technologies were developed. The United States would emerge from the war as the most powerful nation in the world. Democracy denied. In 1941, approximately 120,000 Japanese Americans lived in the west coast of the United States, most of them in California. Though many were naturalized citizens and even were born in the United States, they faced widespread discrimination. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, a majority of Americans believed that every person of Japanese descent could be a potential spy. A Japanese American business owner displayed his banner the day after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Three months later, after FDR had signed Executive Order 9066, the man, an American citizen, was forcibly removed to a war relocation camp. And the sign here says, I am an American. Children at the Willie Public School in San Francisco pledged allegiance to the American flag in April 1942, prior to the internment of Japanese Americans. Most of the 112,000 Japanese Americans who were relocated to internment camps were infants, school-aged children, and young adults. Virtually all were born in the United States and were U.S. citizens. Many did not even speak Japanese. Most Japanese Americans lost their homes and businesses and most of their possessions. From an official notice issued by the Western Defense Command and 4th Army Wartime Civil Control Administration, evacuees must carry with them on departure for the assembly center the following property, beddings and linens, no mattresses for each member of the family, toilet articles for each member of the family, extra clothing for each member of the family, sufficient knives, forks, spoons, plates, bowls, and cups for each member of the family, and essential personal effects for each member of the family. The size and number of packages is limited to what that can be carried by the individual or family group. Japanese Americans were relocated to camps in remote areas in states like Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho, and Utah. These camps were surrounded by barbed wire and patrolled by army guards. In the detention centers, families lived in substandard housing, had inadequate nutrition and health care, and had their livelihoods destroyed. Many continued to suffer psychologically long after their release. Explore the constitutional institutions issues surrounding the internment of Japanese Americans and listen to one Japanese American relate his experiences during the war. Democracy denied Japanese internment. The forced relocation and internment of Japanese Americans during World War II was obviously a violation of their constitutional rights. But exactly which rights were violated? Take a minute to think about what you know about the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Then click on each document to learn more. Click listen to interview to hear Japanese Americans speak about his experience during the war. Okay, so we're looking at the Constitution. It clearly says the writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended or done away with. The basic idea behind habeas corpus is that people living in the United States cannot be held against their will without just cause. To put it another way, you cannot be jailed or detained if there are no charges against you. If you are being held illegally, you can demand the courts issue a writ of habeas corpus. A writ of habeas corpus is an explanation of the reason for your detention. If there is no good or compelling reason for your detainment, the court must send you free set you free. And looking at the, the amendments, from the Fifth Amendment, no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless the pres presentment or in indictment of a grand jury except in cases arising in the land or naval forces or the militia when the actual service in time of war or public danger, nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb, nor shall be compelled by in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. And if you want, you can listen to the interview down there. 
and then we have to complete the graded assignment. And we will be doing this the majority of a graded assignment in the Class Connect, so be sure that you're checking your announcements and your schedule for when that Class Connect will be and try to attend live or watch recording. But for that graded assignment, you will also need from Lesson Resources the graded assignment primary sources sheet, which gives you excerpts from the majority opinion. This is when the case went to the Supreme Court. The let me back up a little bit. It's the, the case, let's read the background information. Shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor, U.S. Supreme Court Justice Owen J. Roberts accused Japanese Americans in Hawaii of helping Japan in the attack. There was no proof of the charge. Newspapers reported suspected Japanese American sabotage despite having little evidence. Racial prejudice toward Japanese Americans erupted. Wartime hysteria, hysteria exploded and Roosevelt issued Executive Order 9066. This resulted in Japanese Americans in the West Coast being forcibly relocated and imprisoned in relocation centers. Several cases involving Executive Order 9066 were brought before the Supreme Court. The court repeatedly accepted claims by the government that the internment of Japanese Americans was a military necessity. These decisions were made without close examination. One of these cases was Korematsu versus the United States, 1944. This case was brought before the court by Fred T. Korematsu. Korematsu had been born in Oakland, California. His parents were born in Japan. He stayed in San Leandro, California after Civilian Exclusion Order No. 34 directed all persons of Japanese ancestry to leave the area. He was convicted of a crime and he appealed to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court upheld the conviction in a 6-3 decision. Six justices voted in favor of the conviction, three voted against or dissented. Below are key excerpts from the majority and dissenting opinions. And for your graded assignment, you'll have questions you'll find from the background information, questions you'll find in the majority opinion. So that majority opinion is the majority of justices that believed this man should be sent to a relocation center and the dissenting opinion are the judges that disagreed. They're the minority but they did disagree with the opinion uh, thought that this man should not be forced to relocate and the whole internment of Japanese Americans was unconstitutional. So that will be completed and talked about in a class connect. So as I said be sure you're checking your announcements and your schedule for when that class connect will be. Otherwise, if we go back, that's the end of this lesson, just completing the 3.11 graded assignment, and good luck on all of your assignment work.